In this section, we'll be developing connection between chat client and server using web sockets. We will be also looking at the JMS. It, this is a Java messaging service. In this section, we start from creating WebSocket server. So we'll be leveraging Java Enterprise Edition API to create a WebSocket server. Next, we'll be creating WebSocket client that will be able to connect to that server and exchange messages between them. Lastly, we'll be using JMS to send messages using Java messaging service. And this is a first video of this third section. In this video, we'll be creating WebSocket server. So we'll be creating WebSocket projects and we will add all necessary dependencies and also we'll be creating WebSockets server site. So we have WebSocket project opened, but let's start from looking at the pom.xml file. In that file, we are defining that we are using Java Enterprise Edition API in the version number eight. Next, we need to add a Maven var plugin. This is a plugin that allows Maven to package our application into the war file. Next thing, we are configuring Maven compiler and we are setting that we are using Java 1.8. Lastly, the most important thing in that configuration is adding plugin to Org Eclipse Jetty. Jetty will allow us to start our WebSocket server in the embedded mode. So we'll be able to type Jetty Run or Jetty Start and it will start our application out of the box. We don't need to deploy it anywhere in this specific example. Important is the context path. We need to set it to the directory in which all classes reside. So let's go to the hero world endpoint example. This is an endpoint that will be exposed via web socket. The most important thing is a server endpoint annotation. That server endpoint annotation is from the Java enterprise, Java X web sockets. When our server will start, it will scan all classes and every class that has a server endpoint annotation on it will be added as the web socket endpoint. We are setting a path to everything inside of that class to slash hello. Every good implementation of WebSocket should have four messages in it. First message is open, on open is called when socket is open for the first time. Next is on message. On message is called when new message arrive to our web socket. On error is called when something bad happen inside of our code. So anywhere in on open, on message or on different path, if exception will be thrown, the on error will be called. So this is a like catch all exceptions and prox them to the on error. Last thing is on close. On close is called only once for a WebSocket. And you guess it, it is called when WebSocket is closed. But let's go to the implementation of every method. Firstly, we are having here constructor that is only logging that class is loaded by our container. So it will give us an information this specific class was picked by the jetty and started and loaded. Next, when our socket will be opened, so when the client will connect to that socket for the first time, we are calling on open. We are getting session here, so we are logging that session is opened and every session has ID. So we are getting this specific ID of this specific session. If our server endpoint will have multiple clients, then this on open will be called for every client. So every client has specific session object associated with them and every object has unique ID. So once we are opened session successfully, we are getting the remote 
we need to call it and we can then send text. So we are setting text and sending it to the client of this WebSocket. And this message is sent. Either we are successfully connected. If anything bad happened, we need to catch it. Next callback is on message. We can see that this is annotated with on message annotation. This is more interesting method because that method is called every time new message arrived to WebSocket. So when client is sending first message, second, third, and so on and so on, every time this method will be called with two arguments. First is the specific message that is sent from client to our server. And second one is the session. This is the same session object as here. So once we get message and session, we are just logging it that we received that message. Lastly, we are just sending text back again to client. So if the client sent us a message, we are sending message back to client that is stating we receive your message and we are proxying that message back to the client to assure the client that everything happened properly. On error implementation is a naive, but for our purpose is okay. So we are just printing the exception. And last method is on close. So that method will be called every time our client will leave the WebSocket. So if the client will close the browser, the WebSocket will be closed as well. So that callback will be called here. On close will just print the session closed and that specific ID.